Hello and welcome to the build. So today we're going to be putting together Hong Kong Models brand new 48 scale Avril Lancaster Mark 1. This is a brand new tooling for 2021. If you haven't already seen the unboxing review that I've done, there's links down below in the description. So head across there and check that out. You'll have a look at the uh, sprues and what you get in the box. But what we're going to be doing now is putting the fuselage together. So what I'm going to do is run through the instructions. So we've got the construction of the pilot seat going in. We've obviously got the crew compartment going together, that being installed down into the floor of the uh, fuselage itself. A few more interior parts going in, the flight engineer's panel, some more in de interior detail down the rear end, and then right the way across till we get to the point of joining the fuselage halves together. So we've got a few interior parts to put in, the clear parts to install, a little bit of photo etch to go through with you. Uh, right up to the point we get the fuselage halves together and we'll also be dealing with any sanding and filling of seams and rescribing of any lost panel line detail and rivet detail that we've lost just popping that back in we'll be getting it to the point of putting it into the spray booth ready for paint so without further ado we'll play the footage and uh, I'll be talking through it with you as we go through it so we're starting off with assembly of the two halves of the pilot seat going together just using a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin. You've got a back plate to install. And again, just nudging that into position. And there's a slight gap to be filled, so we're using a wee bit of styrene filler just to take care of that. And we'll come back in later and sand that smooth. And we've got the cockpit floor. So just take care of any sprue tabs you find. Just in case of giving in a wee bit of a sand. So we've got the interior parts cut off the sprue, cleaned up any burring and we're gluing the control column together here. And you can see we've obviously got all the other parts cut off the sprue in preparation for going into the spray bay. This part here glues on the back of this bulkhead. So you can see we've glued a few parts on the cockpit floor in preparation for going into paint. And we're priming here using Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black. And we're thinning that using some rapid thinner. About 60% thinner to about 40% paint. Just give everything a good coat. Painting things up, the instrument panel there, a few of the interior parts. Table for the navigator and wireless operator. And the rudder pedals, getting a coat of paint there as well. Wireless operator's console, or radio. And a few other interior parts, including the control column. And of course the pilot seat. So you can see here in this shot, as I say, we've glued in a few of the parts, coverings for the wing spars. And of course the fuselage halves themselves. So we're using XF69 NATO black as per the kit instructions. It's a kind of off black, it's a nice colour to use in this sort of scenario. Bit of controversy here, I've decided to paint the nose section black. After doing a bit of research I was under the impression that s for sugar had a black nose, but I've now confirmed that that's not the case. So if you're doing this, follow the instructions and paint the nose green. So we're using Cockpit Green XF71 here. And we're just getting a bit of mottling going down, just sort of building up that colour, modulation, bit of variation, right the way across the interior. Some other parts getting painted up as well. So as I say, we've I've masked off the nose, but if you're doing S for sugar, don't bother doing this, just mask all over the Bombay. So as I say, it was just the same thing again, just building up that interior colour. 
to the point that we're happy with it. And the same thing, we're just obviously painting up the rest of the interior, front half of the cockpit here, just sort of building up that modulation. Obviously the table getting a coat in there as well. And the pilot seat getting a coat of green. Navigator's chair there as well. Back in with XF69 to do our instrument panels and just touch in some of the other parts that we've already added the interior green to. And we'll come back in and hand paint in any detail. And just going over the fuselage, just comparing the colours, just to make sure that we're in the same ballpark. A little bit more needed on the left, I think. So we're out the spray bay now, and this is the end result. So as I say, ignore the black nose section. And here's the rest of the cockpit done up as well. One thing to note, which I missed off, this part here needs two photo etch plates installed to blank over the moulding detail, which I unfortunately missed out. So I'd recommend doing this before you go into paint. It's a case of cutting these two parts out. And as I say, this is the part, offending part. This is J59. Just be careful the orientation when it comes to install this in the cockpit. It's upside down in this photo. So as I say, I've sanded off the paint and we're just using a little bit of super glue to get these stuck into place. So as I say, we're coming back in with the uh, Tamiya colour. We're just thinned it with some airbrush cleaner, just to aid hand painting. And we're just tidying up any edges, any overspray that we have. And adding some interior detail painting. So again, you need to check your references. The kit just gives you the generic interior green colour. It doesn't tell you about any of the coloration of the piping, or the bottles, or the side console panels here. So just check your references. So now we've got to paint the uh, the green leather interior. The kit recommends XF5, but I prefer using XF70, so that's what I've gone with here. So same thing again, just thinned using Vallejo airbrush cleaner. Just makes hand painting a lot easier. We've got more interior parts, so this is the pilot's trim tabs. So we're painting this bit with XF7 red. And the front half using some Mr. Metal Buffable Dark Iron. Which we're going to use now to dry brush the interior parts. Because it's a buffable metalizer, the more you the more you buff, the more shiny it gets, the brighter it gets. And it also, if you dry brush it enough it starts to make parts look quite heavy and very metallic which I think gives a nice effect and just catches the light nicely so we're just giving the entire cockpit the same treatment just sort of gives that kind of worn used look that we're after just in case of going around everywhere as I say the longer they buff the shinier everything gets it's up to yourself where you want to stop and finally, we're just coming in painting up. These are the blow-off bottles for the landing gear in an emergency if the hydraulics failed. This uh, air pressure would allow the gear to be dropped. So now we're constructing the main cockpit. So we're gluing these parts on the underside just to keep everything a bit cleaner. But all these parts fit together beautifully. Same thing again. We've got this end support for the table going in. Just locates in the tabs at the bottom. And once you've got that into place, you can then come in with the table for the navigator and the wireless operator.
couple of tabs at this end here to be glued in place and one point at the far end. So using some Revel Contactia glue here, I've had to decant mine because my bottle broke. But it's a slower setting glue, so we're just putting some in the uh, locating holes and a couple on the parts that are going to be in contact with the floor. It'll just allow us to get a really good strong bond. And what we're going to do is use a couple of clamps just to hold that into position. And then we're going to just run a bit of glue down the outside just to make sure we've got a nice secure bond. We're going to use the same glue on the bulkhead at the rear. I decided to paint mine separately, but you could always just install this before painting. It's up to yourselves. So there's a tab at the bottom here it needs to kind of locate into. Once you get it located in there, it should just fall into place. And the same thing again, we're just going to run a bit of glue down the outside just to make sure we've got a nice secure bond. We've done the same thing on the fuselage halves, just dry brush them using the Mr. Metal buffable colour. So that's a dark iron coloration. Just sort of helps that ribbon pop out. And the same thing, we've used it to paint up this rear part here. So what we're looking at now, this is actually Yahoo's aftermarket panel for the Tamiya Lancaster. So my intention was to use this panel to upgrade the kit. But I was actually quite impressed with the kit detail itself. The only thing is, this is the aftermarket flight engineers panel, and it's a lot nicer than what the kit provides us with, especially considering we don't get any decals to go into these dials. So I've hand painted these up to give you a rough idea of what it looks like. But as I say, what I'm going to do is use the flight engineer panel from the Yahoo set to replace this kit detail. So as I say, to fit the Yahoo aftermarket panel wouldn't take a lot of effort. You'd have to sand off all the detail from the kit part and remove the two square blocks at the top to fit the panel in. But once you've done that, you can obviously glue the blocks back in. But what I've decided to do is actually use the kit part. So we're just going to hand paint in some of the details using some, I believe it's Vallejo aluminium. And we're going to use the kit decals. So I've set that aside. I've actually gloss coated it using some Future. And while that dries, we're just going to paint up the interior components. So again, you'll need to check your reference photos on this. The kit doesn't give you any indications of what colour these dials should be painted. So I'm using some Posca pens here just to detail these parts up. And the end result doesn't look too bad. So we've used a little bit of gloss to go over the dials just to make give that glass effect. And I'm quite happy with the end result. So we're onto our photo etched seat belts now. So we're going to prime them using some Mr. Metal Primer. This will just help paint stick to the actual photo etched metal itself. And we've painted that using the XF78 deck tan as per the kit instructions. So what I've done is I've glued the pilot shoulder harness on using a little bit of glue at the back, but not at the front yet, just to get the position correct. But I've noticed in the kit we need to add the yellow circle on the pilot's headrest. Unfortunately, we don't get a decal or a mask. So the kit tells us obviously paint this in the coloration of G, which is yellow. So we have to go off and make our own mask and paint that in. So I've done that. And what we're doing now is I'm just using a cocktail stick just to add a bit of shape to the rear harness. And that's just a case of gluing this rear cushion into place. We've already glued the uh, the bottom cushion in. Again, just using a bit of our Tammy Extra Thin glue. So we're adding a, a little bit of bend to the end of the seat belts just to get them to fit into the seat better, just so they sit a bit more natural. So I've glued one end of it, and just a case of locating it into roughly the right area, and the same on the other side. 
and then once we're happy with the position we can glue the ends down so they're not going to ping up and then just manipulating the back or manipulating the shoulder belts just to look a bit more natural and that's the end result so rather than follow the kit instructions which is to have these belts in a crisscross pattern I've decided to go down the route of pre-shaping them so giving them a slight twist and sort of gluing them how I think they should hang so hopefully it'll look a bit more interesting in the interior and we've done the similar thing on the uh, navigator's position so we're coming in we're going to use a, a wash so we're using the Absalong smoke colour and I've put that on some cardboard just to lynch the linseed oil out of the oil which will speed up the drying time and we're using some odorless thinner so it's a case of adding some thinner to your paint and just giving it a really good mix and then once we're happy with our consistency of our wash we can just add it to the interior so I'm not being particularly careful here I'm just kind of slathering it everywhere it's not a particularly dark wash so by the time it dries it should dry back but it will give us all that shadowing that we're after in all the detail here And the beauty of using oils, if you're not happy, you can always come back in later on with some thinner and remove it or manipulate it as you see fit. So we'll leave that to dry and we'll keep checking on it. If we need to change it, we can do. And we're giving the same treatment to the rest of the cockpit. So I started off giving a pin wash and got bored and just started slathering it all over the place. As I say, just coming back in and just sort of manipulating it between drying times so this is actually a second coat of the same wash just sort of building up that colour and got a bit heavy handed so just removing a bit of wash here and going around the rest of the interior so it all kind of matches we've got the bomb aimer site to build up now so you've got two options you can either use the styrene part as it is but you have the option to use the kit parts provided photo etch so you have to snip a part off the bomb aimer site, sand the tab flush, and then you've got two bits of photo etch here which you need to bend into position. But very easy to bend. Similar quality to Eddard. I said in my review the photo etch was a bit thick, but upon using it, there's actually a protective film you need to remove off it. So once you remove that film, it's nice and thin without being too overly flexible. So as I say, we just glued it in position using a bit of super glue, and now we're offering the styrene part up to the photo etch. Just make sure it's in the right orientation, and that's all ready to be installed in our nose section. So we'll carry on doing the interior. So we've got the clear parts going on. We're using some Micro Industries Crystal Clear glue, or you could end up you could use PVA glue. It's very similar, and we're using quite a lot here. The more you use here, is actually going to benefit you. When you offer the clear part up and you push it into place, you'll notice the glue will squirt out. This will give us a really good seal and we can just clean up any excess using a moistened cotton bud. So I'm just checking the position of the clear parts on the outside of the fuselage. There's a little bit of wiggle room here and there to just make sure they're nice and centre. And the same thing again, we can obviously just use a bit of a moistened cotton bud to get rid of any excess but this will provide a good seal around the clear parts as well and make sure we're not going to lose them through handling so you can see there we've done the other side clear parts fit exceptionally well one thing to note don't fit this interior part before putting your clear part in if you fit this interior console it actually blocks off the corner of the window and makes the clear part going in very difficult So here's a quick look at the cockpit interior so far. So we've got all the parts glued into position. And here's what it looks like in the fuselage half. Getting a nice look at it now because we'll never see this interior detail again, which is a real shame. I've noticed a few people have commented 
saying that there's no clear half of the fuselage, which is a bit of a shame, like you say. I suppose if you're creative, you could always cut sections out, like a museum piece. So here's our instrument panel. So this is after putting the decals down. I actually cut all the decals out individually and put them into place using some micro set and saw. So that's them just settled down nicely now. And as I say, comparing it to the Yahoo panel on the left. Quite happy with the dial detail. So it's just a case of coming in and painting up all the buttons, any sort of colorations we need to do. And this is our photo etch panel installed for our flight engineer. Big improvement over the kit, I think, and a worthwhile upgrade. So you can see here, we're just obviously gluing the uh, control column in place. We've got the instrument panel coming in here now. Everything on the interior fits exceptionally well. All just kind of clicks together. If you're having any issues, I would just check your cleanup. There might be some sprue tabs in the way. It's all just clicked together for me so far. So there's a couple of locating pins to be glued using a Revel glue. And this bulkhead at the rear. As well as the bulkheads at the front of the bomb bays. So it's just a case of offering this floor section we've been building up to the half. And it just clicks into place. Make sure the bulkhead at the rear is firmly located. Just using a clamp here to hold that in position and then just securing it using a bit of the extra thin around the bombay areas just to make sure we get a nice secure bond. Something that I noticed in the kit instructions we get told to drill out two holes on the fuselage halves for S for sugar. I'm not entirely sure if this is actually correct but we'll do it just now and if I need to fill them in later on it'll be easier than trying to drill holes. So offering one half up to the other Make sure all the bulkheads are clicked into position, especially the one at the rear. And just making sure everything's square. So we're just using a bit of tape here, just to make sure we get a nice secure bond. Just a case of going round and apply it all the appropriate areas. It's just a case of running around the glue, letting it zip off and do its thing. So now that the two halves are together, I've just used a little bit of filler, which is Mr. Surfacer 500. And I've run a bead of that down the top and bottom of the fuselage halves and left it dry. And then we're using a bit of masking tape to protect the rivet detail. And then coming in with your sander, it's just a case of working through the grits. So you can see the difference between the parts we've masked off and the parts we're sanding. So now we're coming in with a polisher. And this will just take out a lot of the scratches we made by the sanding. Just having a wee check, having a wee look. And now we're coming in with our buffer. And for our final pass, we'll take the masking tape off, just to unify the edges. So now we've polished it up, and we've got a very good, nice join. No issues at all with that. you also notice here that we've installed the clear sections for the top. These just slot into place, no issues at all. But using the masking tape we've done very little damage. But we're still taking care of the seam, no problem at all. So now we're coming in with the razor saw just to pop the panel lines back in. So I'm using one of the Tamiya set. So it's just a case of going round, locating your saw on the existing panel lines and then just joining the two up. Just trying to keep everything as straight as possible. I find the saw very easy to use but the only issue is it leaves quite a rough edge. 
So it's quite a good idea once you've used the saw to come back in with a bit of extra thin just to run a bit in the panel line. And what that'll do is smooth out the panel line itself. So I'm using the Tamiya Scriber here just to show you guys. And I found it's actually quite a good size for matching the kit detail. So you can see here in the shot as well how little damage we've actually done through the sanding. We're just coming back in, just smoothing out that panel line with some extra thin. So we're just popping that rivet detail back in. And we've got a little bit of clean up on the top turret as well. So we're using a skinny stick in here just to clean up that edge. And then we've got a fairing to install for the top turret. Just locates in these two holes in the top. And it's a very good fit. No issues at all. Onto the nose section, you've got this plate to go in the rear. Don't try and force it in as I'm doing here. You'll just end up separating the fuselage. Instead, there's a couple of tabs at the front. If you locate these into the nose correctly, and then kind of twist the part it just slots into place with very little effort and should leave you with a lip which will allow the fairing for the front turret to be installed so we're quite happy with that so we're just gluing that in place so we've got the bomb mirrors chair going in so we put the photo etch in place painted the interior panel and we just got these two pieces to install on the underside these are quite predominant on an actual Lancaster and the fit here there's a bit of a gap on either side but actually replicates the plane in real life so I'm not too worried about filling it I did actually have to sand these slight, slightly to get them to fit correctly in the nose so we've got the bomb aimer sight going in so this is the photo etch part we made up earlier just a little bit of glue on these three tabs and it's a case of trying to get it as centred as possible I've tried to show in the video how I managed to do it so you can see there's two feet located either side of the clear part on the side of the nose and then one to the left hand side of the window at the bottom so hopefully you can see that so we've installed the front blister We've used a bit of our crystal clear and we've just run a bead of that around the outside and just pushed it on and we've masked that up using some masking tape and some micro mask mask oil. That's it for part one. So far so good. Kit's going together really well. No major issues. I would follow your references as to your painting of the interior. Uh, the kit provides you some good level of detail and a very good basis if you wanted to do any more scratch building um, but we'll push on so coming up in part two we go through building up of the wings putting the engines together getting the props sorted out and then the construction of the landing gear so join me then as i say thank you very much for watching appreciate the likes and the comments you've been leaving and we'll see you in part two